you're here, you're probably coming from my main channel video where I just annihilated glitter grout for the third time. And you saw how the backsplash turned out and maybe you wanna know how I did it in detail. Now I am an amateur to the highest degree. Every single renovation, project, or anything we do comes from zero expertise. I was born with zero expertise. I don't do anything very well. Backsplashes and tiling is no different. But personally for me, sometimes when I watch instructional videos and like how-to videos, it can go over my head because I'm not understanding the terms. So I feel like there's a lot of value in an amateur teaching other amateurs in a way that is maybe easier understood. And honestly, when I did my first backsplash, I feel like a video like this would have been helpful. By the way, I would like on record that this backsplash is still standing. It has not come crashing down and it still looks good. Now, if you're a professional, please be nice or leave. Okay, I'm gonna say a lot of things that you probably know for a fact are wrong, but I've gotten this far. I've tiled things and they've turned out well. I'm making this video because I fully believe that if you follow these steps, the backsplash or the tiling project you're doing will turn out seven out of 10, which I feel like is pretty good. If you don't think that's good enough, go find an expert to teach you how to do this. Anyways, okay, so step one to your project is figuring out what you're going to tile and measuring that piece that you're gonna tile. It sounds simple, but it's actually a little bit complicated, especially if you are not the most fabulous mathematician. Like there's been projects for me where I buy one box too little tiles or one box too many, and I don't fully understand why. So one rule of third and a little tip that I'll give you is buy 10% extra tiles for, you know, let's say you cut one and it shatters, or <laughs> you notice there's a space that you didn't account for, now you have that extra box, but basically you're just gonna wanna measure out your project. Let's say you're doing a simple subway tile backsplash and it is three feet by 10 feet. So you're gonna times three by 10, that's 30 square foot, but there's a little cabinet piece, which is one foot by two foot. This is so hypothetical, this doesn't make any sense, but you're gonna understand. You're gonna then times that, and then you have your final number, and then you're gonna times that by 10%. That is how much square footage of tile you need. Now there are so many places that you can buy tile. You can buy them online, you can go to like Home Depot or Home Hardware, just a hardware store and get some. And sometimes people ask me how much things cost, so it really depends because you can get tiles that are, you know, like $2 a square foot, and I'm speaking in Canadian. And for instance, I've actually paid, this was crazy, $26 a square foot. It was a marble tile, but it depends on your budget for the project. Okay, once everything's off the counters, then you gotta cover your bases so nothing gets dirty or ruined. You guys might notice that you don't recognize these countertops or this sink. We've been doing tons of work. We've been doing it all ourselves, but I just haven't been like updating you guys with it. I have been filming it though in kind of like short form format. So if you guys want to see like a little like short series on this kitchen and what we've been doing, let me know. One more thing for prepping is you wanna take all of these outlet covers off and also make sure it's a flat surface. This is where the old countertop was, so there's a little bit of a ledge, so I'm just gonna sand that. And then you might notice this too, we had to get a bit of the plumbing fixed, so we just gotta make sure that's all even. Just remember though, this is an amateur teaching you. I didn't say that it would be perfect. I just said I've done it before and if and it's turned out okay, all right? No professionals allowed. No professionals allowed. Okay, now that everything is covered, we can get all of the tools and things we need to do the backsplash. So to lay your tile, you're gonna need a few trim pieces, a putty knife spatula thing, tile adhesive, tiles, you also need spacers, and also this brick-like trowel thing. And see, this is what I'm talking about when I say I'm an amateur. I'm not gonna know the names for it, okay? And to some people, that's gonna come off like I'm some big dummy. But to me, it's just like, it's not my expertise. I know what I need to know to get the project done, and that's it. When I mention trim, 
This is what I'm talking about. Here is what it looks like. You can get it at Home Depot, Rona, any hardware store. It's very easy to find too. I've seen people comment being like, I get so lost when I go into Home Depot. So if you ever want me to like break down that, I can go into Home Depot. <laughs> and show you guys where to find things. But okay, basically go into the tile area and you will find the tile edging. So as you can see, there's this side and then there's also this side that looks more like a little finished edge. So what you're gonna wanna do, and what we actually used to do is we used to screw this in all the way around where you're gonna backsplash. It makes it look really nice and finished. But now instead of screwing it in, we just stick it down with the tile adhesive. Again, technically, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's what we do and it works for us because the tile adhesive is basically like cement, so it holds it down. Cause sometimes the screws will be like sticking out even if you use a flathead screw and then the tile will like pop up a little bit there. So we find it's just easier to stick it down with the adhesive. So basically wherever you're gonna tile, so like right here, you're gonna cut this to be the edge. The only spot you don't need it is at the bottom, which I'll explain later, but you don't need this at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna wanna get this corner piece right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure from underneath the cabinets down and it's 15 and a half. So I have this little piece. I just cut this down for the sake of the video, but usually it's that really long piece, which is kind of difficult to use at the beginning. So then this is 17. So at 15 and a half, I'm just gonna take these snips and just cut it down. <laughs> These snips are very great. Two seconds later. Back with different snips. Yeah! There you go. And then you have your piece and you would go like this. See in this corner? Just like so. Ta -da! And that's your first edge piece. So you just have to do it all the way around the tracing of the top. have all the trim pieces cut. This is something that we learned in the last probably two projects and we learned this from a professional tiler and basically you take a piece of cardboard before you begin and you're gonna put that at the bottom of your project so that you're backsplashing with you know the thickness of a piece of cardboard underneath because then when everything's said and done you didn't just like cement your backsplash to your countertop. <laughs> which we've done before. Um, so this will make it so that you can have that little bead of silicone at the bottom, which makes it look very professional. And then if you ever want to change out your countertop, you're good. So I'm just gonna tape ours down a little bit, but this is what you're gonna wanna do right at the beginning. This is kind of like a little bit of a hack. When you were figuring out how you wanted to lay your tiles or what style of tile, this is probably when you would have thought of this, but we're gonna be laying as a simple brick pattern with a subway style tile, which in my opinion is the absolute easiest tile to lay. If you're a beginner, I would say to go for this. We laid a mosaic flower tile upstairs and it was literally the worst tile I've ever laid in my entire life. It was so difficult. So I would say start with a simple design if it's your first one. Obviously you do whatever you want and I will never stray away from something difficult because I know you got this. Like do a crazy pattern if you want, but I'm just saying if you don't want a headache, do an easy pattern like this. But yeah, so we're gonna be doing a subway tile and we're gonna be laying it in a brick, which I feel like is very simple and almost like some people would nary to say out of style, but I don't care what's in style and what isn't. I like it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> I was wow. <laughs> Wait, maybe you should show them. Okay. You don't want to leave your lid off your tile adhesive or else it'll dry so we take a big glob on a big paddle and then you can just put it on like this. That's what it's like. You just ice a cake. Just like that. Be careful around that. You don't want to stick anything wet or metal in there. You don't. You might even want to shut off the power for where you're working. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Which we've totally done. <laughs> we always do that. Okay, so once you've done a little bit, you go like this. Troweling. 
That looks so nice. Pressure's on. I know, right? Put on the edge piece there and then edge piece on put a little bit more i'm getting bored and then the tile and these tiles are nice because they're a little bit wavy wavy yeah like do you guys see that the tile is a little wavy so if you have a more straight one you have to be a little bit more careful yeah and when applying the adhesive you do have to work rather quickly but you also don't have to like speed run it like it's not going to dry in one minute but it will start to dry in like five to ten depending on the tile adhesive you have so try to work in a small area especially when you're just getting started because you don't want to put a ton of tile adhesive on and then by the time you get there it's dry and now it's not going to be flush with the wall if you find that you put on the cement or the adhesive and you're not in that spot yet and you're not going to get to it right away just take a flat trowel and clean it off just so that it doesn't dry and then cause you trouble later on mom i have bad news about your paint suit <laughs> if you're that? gonna be like that <laughs> is it see-through it is <laughs> Since my mom is more of a detail-oriented person, that might have been a little confusing, so let me just give you another little breakdown, okay? Okay, so you're gonna grab some tile adhesive, like so. You're gonna put it on the wall, like so. Not too thick, and you're not gonna try and go too far with your first little bit, but that's just me. That's how I live my life. <laughs> then you're gonna take this. As you can see, it doesn't have to look glamorous and washing these are very tedious, so ours is rusty. Uh, you're gonna go like this. I like to add a little razzle dazzle like that. <laughs> Depends on what you're thinking. Now you take your tile and now you're gonna push it on here just like this. Ta-da, like so, until it squishes on. There you go, but you're not done yet. No, you're not. You need to take some spacers. Now you don't have to buy spacers. You could use like a what? quarter. <laughs> what? It's true. Push it on. Ooh! You don't want that tile coming flying down. <laughs> like that. I'm gonna put on one more. So I'm gonna scrape this top piece because I don't want that to dry. Alrighty, now we're gonna stick this tile on like so. Same exact story. Like that. Squish the spacers in, and bada boom, bada bing. Your entire backsplash is finished. So just to reiterate what I was saying, put on the tile adhesive, trowel it, stick your tile on, separate the tiles with spacers, and then you just keep continuing that. I like to lay first all the ones that don't need cuts and then go in and cut later. The problem arises when you have to cut your tiles. So let me give you a little breakdown on cutting tiles, okay? Cutting the tiles. This is my personal least favorite thing to do. I do have a wet saw for this, but I also have this really cool tool that you can do for straight cuts. This little cutter is very user friendly and like let's say you need to get a little jut out. You can honestly cut it into a few pieces, then when you put it together, the adhesive will keep it together. Like if you can't get that little square out. That's awesome. Pig! There's also wet saws, which I am scared of, but I use them sometimes when I'm doing a big project and we have to cut lots of tiles. With a little backsplash, honestly, you can get pretty far with just one of those little cutters. And putting up the tiles is going to be the longest, tedious project, or part of this project, in my opinion. Once everything's up and all the pieces are in, if there's anything that looks like it's not really held on, I like to take green painter's tape. It doesn't have to be green, but just taping those down so that they have a little bit of extra support for overnight during the drying time. And then tomorrow we can grout. Usually tile adhesive has to dry for like overnight, so we're gonna let it. So after letting that dry, I'm just gonna take the tape off, take all of the spacers out, and then we're gonna start grouting. Okay, so for grouting, the tools you'll need is a bucket, a sponge, one of these. What is this called? 
Um, it is called a rubber float. Oh, it's a float. Yes, the floats are really, really helpful. And then also a spatula like this. Now, normally I've been using sanded grout, but I used non-sanded grout the other day and I was like, this is a whole new world. I don't know why we didn't use it. I'm not really an expert of which grout to use when, but I think that the sanded grout is for when you have larger gaps because it's a little bit stronger and it can fill those nooks. But I will say non-sanded grout, in my opinion, is easier to use. Also a tip, when grout says it's white, it's beige. And if it's light gray, it's white. I figured that out the hard way too. I don't know why that is. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to put the grout up. So basically take your grout, whether it's pre-mixed, whether it's sanded, whether it's not, whatever. So I'm just gonna take it off the putty knife onto the float and then just gonna basically push it in and then run across so it starts filling all of those holes. And you'll notice like these tiles have quite big holes because they're all different shapes. Sometimes the grout can be very forgiving, but say you're laying like white tiles and you use like a charcoal grout, well now you gotta grout your freaking house down boots because seriously, that's gonna be difficult because it's not gonna be forgiving. It's gonna really stand out. Not saying you can't do it because you can do whatever you put your mind to. So yeah, we're just gonna push that in and we're gonna work in a small area. Similar as like putting the tile adhesive on, you don't wanna do too much because you don't want it to dry. Okay, so now that I have my area, I'm just gonna wipe off as much of the grout off the face of the tiles as I can, just like so, and then put that back in there. And then you're gonna grab your sponge and wring it out. Then with a very light touch, you're just gonna drag this across all the tiles you just grouted. Getting all that like grout right off of the tile faces. And you'll see as this dries, it might be a little bit foggy. So you'll have to go in and do this again. There we go, ta-da! So then you just have to do that all over. I personally think grouting is easier than laying the tiles. It's also more fun. But yes, this is it. So you're gonna do that to the entire backsplash and then you're gonna wait another day. And I usually like to finish it off with like a white bead of silicone along the bottom, but you can use clear or a dark color or whatever you're looking for. But siliconing is really easy. You just fill in the nook and then I usually go with my finger and I have a piece of paper towel so I can wipe it off so that you get that really straight line there. It really completes the look. And just like that, with those simple and easy 150 steps, you as an amateur and me as an amateur can tile things. Some people think that tiling only can be done by the professionals. And I will say, if you want the job to look absolutely perfect, no mistakes, and you don't have time to work on anything, then yeah, hire it out. But I'm just saying, if you can't afford to hire it out and you'd like to try it, you find things like this fun, you can do it. So yeah. I don't know how informative or instructional this is. I asked you guys once on my main channel if you'd like a video like this, and a lot of you seemed interested. And I know I personally would have been interested, it, like past me, I would have liked to see a video like this. So if you have any other information you'd like to hear, or if you've seen me do any renovations and you've been like, what, how do you do that as an amateur? I can do these videos for sure. I would love to help you guys if it's something that's interesting for you. Just remember to always be safe. And if it's feeling dangerous, you should stop, <laughs> okay? If it's feeling dangerous, it's probably because it is and you need to stop. But I believe in you and I believe that your tile work is gonna look amazing. Well, I think that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!